Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. is the 17th anniversary of 9-11. And our thoughts and prayers, of course, are with the families and loved ones and friends and people who we've lost. We all remember where we were at the time of this catastrophe. And, you know, the outcome is 17 years later. Our country is resilient. Yeah. But we never forget. <clears throat> So Nicki Minaj spoke out about her fight with Cardi B. Well, you know, Nicki's got uh, this podcast that she does, or, you know, this radio show. And so she had all the time in the world to speak reckless, curse words included. Um, remember, it was um, Cardi who attacked Nicki Friday night at the Icon Party at the Plaza Hotel here in New York. Well, Nicki went on her radio show yesterday and said she would never talk about anyone's child. She, she, well, this is, Cardi was saying, you know, you talked about my child and that's why, you know, I'm wiling out on you. So she unleashed on Cardi. Just take a listen to this. I was a part of something so mortifying and so humiliating to go through in front of a bunch of upper echelon people. The way they pass by looking at this disgusting commotion, I will never forget, I was mortified. This woman is at the best stage in her career and she's out here throwing bottles and throwing shoes? Who the f is gonna give her intervention? This f ain't f funny. You put your hands on certain people, you gonna die. The die word was pretty heavy. Um, somebody call Queen Latifah and MC Light. No, you laugh. But these are two queens of hip hop who forged new lives for themselves, grown women with respected careers. And I feel as though Cardi probably does need to be talked to, but so does Nicki, although I don't think Nicki will listen. You know, um, I, I just feel like Cardi can be saved and, and Nicki is perpetually angry. And she's very, this Nicki Minaj, she's very, very smart and calculating with what she says and how she says it. See, Cardi, you were baited and you fell into the trap. <laughs> Both you women knew that you were gonna be there last, or the other night at that Icon Ball. And Nikki, um, you, you knew that Cardi would be sitting near you. And Cardi, I don't know whether you went in there with fire in your mind to get this girl or not, but an, an offset was not with her, so there was no husband to like, you know, calm down, relax. And I don't know who Cardi surrounds herself with who would co-sign this as opposed to pull her back. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, like, who is your camp, Cardi? 
And Cardi, when you get in the studio, please find something else to rap about, not this beef. Not, <laughs> not this. Um, but Nikki has had a long, long history of battling with people. I need my list. Mm. Okay. Oh, yes, there you see. <laughs> Safari, DJ Self, numerous rappers, Tiffany Haddish, the cast of Love & Hip Hop, her own record label, her hairstylist, Spotify, Billboard Magazine, Travis Scott, Kylie Jenner, and a seven-month-old baby. You all, it's starting to be like your personalities are becoming bigger than your music. That's not, that's not good. That's not good. Anyway, um, good luck with you women sorting out your lives. So Ben Affleck is back in rehab. Well, we know this, he went back in a few weeks ago. It seems as though he's always been in rehab. I, I, but this is his third time. I guess he does like long stretches. Well, he's got a, he, he, look, he's 48-ish, and he's got a 22-year-old playboy girlfriend. Her name is Shauna Sexton. And she was spotted going to visit him. Oh, that, oh yes. Oh, yes. He's still making wise choices, I see. Um, like, he was with the girl from Saturday Night Live, that producer, who I told you the relationship wouldn't last because she's here in New York and he's in LA. And, and she's got children, a child here in New York and there's no rock star life fly, flying back and forth. Like, once you have kids, all bets are off. They change your life and sometimes ruin it. <laughs> um, so it was Ben's ex-wife, Jennifer Gardner. Now, you know, they have three children together. <laughs> Oh, she's a saint. She's a saint. Their children are 12, nine, and six. So a really, really uh, pivotal time in their lives. It was Jennifer Garner who actually drove him to rehab after she looked on, look, there she is. They're at the Jack in the Box. And she's like, here, just, just eat. Just, just eat. This is when they're on the way to rehab. Yup. She looks frustrated as hell. And he looks like he needs rehab. Well, she looked online, right? And what she saw was she got nervous and that's where she swooped down and said, nope, back to rehab, third time. All right, back to rehab. Delivery of liquor to Ben's house. And of course, you know, it doesn't help that he's dating a 22-year-old girl, which is not the best thing. Um, he, they said he hadn't showered in days. He was just, I mean, I, <laughs> Okay, and Ben's mom is now living with Jennifer and the kids, which is helpful in the beginning, but uh, no, not really, mom-in-law. <laughs> what about when I want to date? Cause I'm, or when I want to have my girls over and talk loud and play cards all night. <laughs> now, here you are. Well, um, the mother uh, is right there and they were spotted at church together. And like I said, the mom now lives with her. I wonder what Ben Jennifer Lopez dealt with. Cause the, the, the weight fluctuating Ben, who, who's unkempt and not showered, in rehab three times, I couldn't picture Lopez dealing with that. Oh. Like every time we saw them out together, even when he wasn't with her, but they were still dating, it was always a nice, oh, oh my God. Yeah, the hair slicked back, good suits, the whole bit. Lopez, you dodged a bullet. <laughs> anyway, I believe that Hollywood will take Ben back. We were talking in our Hot Topics meeting this morning and the reason why they'll take him back is because he's already an A-list person. They easily forgive A-list people and, and, and men. <laughs> and they will give him another chance. I mean, they forgave Robert Downey Jr. for God's sakes, and he was, he was found down the street in the... And he was found down the, down the beach 
in a stranger's child, uh, children's bed. Yeah, oh yeah, he just wandered in. Oh, hi. You know, look, Ben, take care of yourself and come back to the smoldering Ben that you once had. Did I tell you that they asked me to judge Miss America? No, no, it's, it already happened. So, so I'm talking about the one that just happened. I get the call, bring over vacation. I'm like, do they know how I feel about beauty pageants? I think I've been consistent for 10 years. I don't like beauty competitions. I don't like them. I don't care about the scholarship money. I get it. You know, Miss New York won. She got a $50,000 scholarship. But the point is, is that, you're, but you're still, not that way, prancing around on TV with a bunch of makeup and evening gowns. Swimsuit or no swimsuit, the point is it's, it's still a beauty pageant. And so I said no on account of, I would be worse than Simon Cowell. <laughs> well, as long as you're up there talking, turn around. Let me see what you're working with. Uh, I, I wouldn't be good, so I declined. And dodge that bullet. <laughs> so speaking of beauty pageants, Kenya Moore, who you know is a beauty pageant recipient, um, she may not, they say, be returning to the Housewives this season, <laughs> but... <laughs> but she still may be back on TV. Yeah. Really? <laughs> See, I don't care about Kenya if she's not on Housewives. Kenya told her fans that, that she has a new project and posted a picture with a crib behind her. I don't care about Kenya and the baby and her alleged husband going alone. I don't care. You know, Kenya's entertaining when she comes in and stirs the pot and has slick lines for other women and slick lines back. We don't know her husband. I'm not trying to get to know her husband. <laughs> we don't know the baby. Leave the baby out of it if, if, if you're pregnant. Leave the baby out of it. So there. <laughs> the ladies are currently in Japan filming right now, and Kenya was not there. So here's the picture. And um, yep, you see Marlo, and you see a Portia, uh, Eva, Candy. Is that Monica? There's Nini. Look, first of all, there are too many housewives. <laughs> Like, like really? <laughs> there should be no more than five housewives on any enterprise. And then we get to know these five housewives. And now if you want to introduce friends of, then fine. But there should only be five there. You know, not for nothing, you know, Nene still has life on the show. And Candy still has life on the show. And I say bring back Kim Zolciak. And then, and then Marlo. And then who else do we need? Oh, and not Phaedra. <laughs> no. <laughs> was Phaedra in that big picture that we just saw? No, she was not. Perfect. <laughs> On a side note, I missed something last night all summer long. One of my destinations was supposed to be to go see the Countess Luann and her cabaret show. I love a cabaret show. You sit, it's very intimate, there are tables. You can order yourself a little something to eat. You have your drinks, it's very civilized. And then she comes out, darling, Jebus. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's very old school. As a matter of fact, I was supposed to be taking my mother and we were gonna go see the Countess. Well, apparently she had a cabaret show last night and Teresa Judy showed up from Jersey. So during the Q&A, because apparently Countess does ask the Countess during the show. <laughs> this is fabulous. So she asked Luann if it's difficult going through a divorce, or if it was difficult going through a divorce on TV. And Luann replied, 
I was solid in my decision. When I'm done, I'm done. And so Teresa responded by saying, me too. When I'm done, I'm done. Oh. Teresa's not divorce, divorcing Joe. Here's what Teresa's doing. Teresa is securing her position in Jersey and it has to be then about more than Teresa raising, you know, all the girls. You know, something spicy has to be going on and unfortunately marriage seems to be the joke that people, you know, use to spice things up. Uh, uh, I don't think she's divorcing Joe. But by the same token, Joe doesn't get out for like another two or three years. And when he does, he still might be deported back to Italy, we're not sure. But if he isn't, I still don't want to see Teresa and Joe on the men's. I don't want to see that. <laughs> Their oldest, who to me it has always been an odd beauty, beautiful girl, she's 17 on her way to college. What does she need for this? Look at those girls. All of them. They're all very pretty. A very pretty family. But Teresa's not going anywhere. Who are you fooling, girl? <laughs> you might not care for him anymore, but you love that check that you're, being get, that you're getting paid so you can pay back the IRS, the CVS, <laughs> the, you know, the people you owe. Did you see that cartoon character of Serena Williams? And, and you know what? I didn't think that this was a race thing. If you listened to me very carefully yesterday, I said that this was clearly a sexist thing. This man, you know, calling her out. Jimmy Connors was cursing people out years ago. And, you know, John McEnroe and those men cursing out and breaking rackets and stuff. But all of a sudden, you're gonna, you know, fine our girl and take a point. And, and, and so, but this, Sometimes we as people of color always have to squint and look because a lot of times there are undertones of racism. Yes. And this is a perfect example. Yes. Who asked for this? Who asked for this? So this cartoon was done by a man who's had a, re a history of not caring what you think about his cartoons. And no one's called the cops on him or gotten him arrested or anything like that. Look at this one right here. This is the prime minister. Oh, it's in Australia, by the way, an Australian newspaper. Look at this one he did prior to, to Serena. All the black people fighting in the background, say, and the prime minister standing there. His name is Mark Wright. And he said, there's nothing wrong with this cartoon or the one with Serena. And, and look, the, this doesn't even look like the girl that beat Serena. They elevated her boobs, they gave her blonde hair. Ugh, disgusted. Well, I had a moment to think about it. And I finally see that Nick Jonas and Priyanka Chopra might be a good couple together. <laughs> uh, he's, he's 26, but they say he's very mature, which I understand, okay. And she's 36. Whoa. Yes. So they got engaged over the summer after only dating for a few months. So all the families have met. It's a big party in, all, in both families. They're going to get married. And this is what my opinion was when they first got together. I thought that she, and she's been here before. I think she's, excuse me. <laughs> I think she's one of the most beautiful women in the world. But she seems to carry herself more like 46, Suzanne. Yeah, she does. Than 36. She's very mature. Very. Very. Mm -hmm. Very. And so when she got with him, I'm just like, what are you doing with this child? How do we look at that? Well, 
if it's right for her. I, I mean, we saw them do a bunch of fun stuff over the internet, you know, over the summer, you know, jet skiing and all kinds of foolishness that made her look young and fun and more her age towards his age. So, is it that she's taller than him maybe that I think that? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't, I don't know. But they're getting married. Although, although, I don't think it's wise to marry anyone or get engaged to anyone after only knowing them for a couple of months. Now, I don't care how wealthy you are or, or what your position is. No, very dangerous. Mm. Shout out to Eddie Murphy. Eddie is expecting his 10th child. Look, there are exceptions to every rule. I'm gonna let this slide. You know why? Because that coming to America money, that nutty professor money, Eddie is rich, takes care of all his kids. We never hear anything about his kids falling out of a club. Look, here are the nine that he already has. Uh huh. And then, um, so he has 10 kids by five babies' mothers. I still do believe, though, that when you have children, you're supposed to be able to spend time with them. It's not about you have money. Like, how do you spend time with, with 10 kids? You know, there, there's still something off about this, but congratulations to you, Eddie, and your fiance person. Some very special people were watching the premiere of yesterday's show of the season. Well, friend to the show, Sean T, you know the ab guy? Yeah. Mm. So, Sean T and his husband have twins, Silas and Sonder. And they got their outfits all ready and they were watching the show along. So cute. Sean T helped my son with a major project. You know that end of the year, the senior year project where everything counts on it or you're not going to college and you're not graduating and stuff. So my son did something on fitness and I didn't realize it, but he got in touch with Sean T and Sean T got back to him and it was real. Fit. Thank you, Sean T, for that. I didn't get thank you. And thank you for watching. Well, that's it for Hot Topics. But there's only one way to go, and that's all the way up. We've got more great show for you, everybody. Coming up next, the inside scoop on the sexual allegations of CBS CEO Les Moonves. So grab a snack and.